Okay, it looks like we're recording. Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, everyone. Actually, we were recording. I think the whole time. So you have you have the back office stuff too. That, that was, that's my AI. So you know, just I'm not going to get any any money from this, but I use read.ai. It's better than Firefly, and it, it's better than Otter because it makes meeting summaries and it's cool. And we'll process Rus Russian and German also. And as a Russian spy, I appreciate having my meeting notes summarized. When, when I talk oh, well, they're all listening. I can tell you that right away. I mean, we have like at least at least 15 agencies uh, tuning in right now. I know. That, that's, why, that's why my Zoom says 20 agencies, but 18 unnamed. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like when you turn on your Wi-Fi and it says FBI van. Right, exactly. I, I, actually, you know, my, my Wi-Fi is called a Revo uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard. Do you think that's bad? <laughs> okay a anyways anyways folks god he interrupted me he threw me off track okay th this is gordon einstein i am your somewhat friendly local dubai crypto attorney focused on blockchain crypto and everything else it's my pleasure however to get out of my lawyer hat or take off my lawyer hat and engage the community because it gives me a good excuse to talk to cool people people who are doing things differently than me people who are sometimes smarter than me people who have a different perspective and it, i like to share these conversations with my ever expanding massive audience, you know, it's, well, the, the trend is right. The trend is my friend. Um, so I am very happy to bring uh, Bruce Porter onto the show. I've known Bruce for years. Uh, he has a very successful show and channel that will uh, he'll describe and we'll also drop it into the show notes. Um, he's also, I'm, I'm finding out a nice and loving dad. And we'll get, we'll get the whole story right there. I, you know, he's where I want to be in a few years. So good job, Bruce. Welcome on the show. Uh, thanks, Gordon. It is a pleasure to be here. Uh, you know, it's always, uh, we have been at this for so long, right? I mean, it's been so many years that uh, it's always good to circle back with people uh, like us uh, like who us. have been in and haven't seen each other for a little while and yeah. touch base, and just get the pulse from the other side of the world. For now, until I drag you out here to Dubai. I'll be there soon. I know, I, I know. I won't be able to help myself. You won't have a choice then. You'll have to come. So, all right, Bruce, you, I'm going to do the usual routine. Where were you born? So I, I was, I'm was. i an Army brat. It's a kind of a funny story because I know we'll probably talk about a, a few different things here. Um, yeah. But I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, right right outside of the uh, – actually on the Army base there at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. I'm a, I'm a Washingtonian, though. Uh, okay. Dad was in the military. We moved around quite a bit but settled on the East Coast. And I've been – I met my wife here like, I don't know. I used to say 20 years ago, but I guess it's more like 30 or something now. But a uh, long time ago, and, uh, and and we're here. So we're here in the Washington, uh, D.C. area, just across the uh, the river. And this is where everything happens here. I stayed in New York as well for, for quite a while. And New York, D.C., this is where it all happens here on the East Coast in the, in the U.S. This is where all the decisions are made. This is where the money's printed. This is where it all happens. This is where, this is where inflation and devaluing of our currency takes place. Um, but just I don't know if you know this. I'm I'm grew up partly in Falls Church, Virginia. No way. So I'm in yeah. I'm just uh, Old Town in Alexandria. Yeah, very cool. Uh, yeah, it was great. My my dad was in the Air Force, and then he worked at the Pentagon on yep. military intelligence. So I was I was a yep. Air Force brat. I was a spy satellite brat. So yeah, I, I mean that's the way it is, right? And then uh, so we're we're around the same age, I think. You know, when we were you, you mean early twenties. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. I might be older than you. I probably am. Um, uh, I but when we were kids, that track of uh, moving up in the <clears throat> within, you know, if you were in the military and then moving up, mm -hmm. that became almost later afterwards such a profitable track. Yes. You know, and then uh, contracting and everything else. And now you get out of the military and you have contracts, you know, for for millions of dollars uh, for yourself. And even you can put together hundred million dollar or even more deals uh, for different companies. It is huge business. Military industrial complex is unbelievably large, especially in this area, as you know. We're, it sounds like a topic for either this show and, or we may go into number two because you have a lot to say. And what's your educational background? So I uh, I was homeschooled as a kid. Dad, it's like one of the original red pillars. Uh, he homeschooled us. He taught me all the stuff that you weren't supposed to know. Uh, I did uh, prep school up in Massachusetts. I went to UNC uh, for for college. I, um, you know, 
uh, when it came time for me to, to join the military and stuff like that, I was like, I was, I was way too, I knew what was going on. You know what I mean? Uh, we were in Panama, we were shooting them up in those narco wars. It was, uh, it's been pretty interesting. So that was, uh, I also was an ice skater. I, I started, I had rotator cuff surgery on my shoulder. I'm at an ice rink right now. As yes, a matter of fact, if you, yeah, I don't know if, uh, yeah, I have, uh, you know, with the, with the kids and everything else. Uh, but I was a hockey player and I had rotator cuff surgery on my shoulder and I started ice dancing and it was a lot of pretty girls. And I thought, well, you know what, this is not such a bad gig. Went around the world. I was, uh, I, I, it was a good run. And of course now my kids skate and, uh, and everything else, but that just kind of, you know, that was a, a period of my life went in to start contracting with the government. I still have to, uh, certain contracts doing it work and some other things. Mm -hmm. Um, and then ran into Bitcoin a little over 10 years ago. And really it was just all over. I was like, uh, okay, this is, this is something different. All my, all my contracting buddies are like, what are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, I, I'm not really sure yet, but <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I oh, oh, that, always works. I know, I know, I shouldn't do it, but I am doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's awesome. So, what was your? It's a, it's a good question, actually. How, how did you come across Bitcoin? A, how did you come across it? But B, what was the process? When did it affect you so that you kind of saw it? Well, yeah, a good question. So my, I have uh, one brother who you know, David. Uh, yeah. and David and I work very closely together. We're, you know, most of the deals. My brother's name is David. David. For better or for worse, we do not work closely together, but it is what it is. Go ahead. Well, I have two other brothers as well, and it's like that. So I might, okay. but one of them, the other brothers, uh, says, hey, Bruce, you know, you got to check these things out. It's, it's Bitcoin. And I'm like, Bitcoin? What is Bitcoin? And so, you know, it was like, dude, Bitcoin was 50 cents. And so I looked at it and I was like, all right, well, it's kind of cool, but I don't, I mean, I don't know. It was like, it was, it was, it was how, how did you get them? What were they? Like, it was just weird. And I, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. And I went on with life and then I looked again and they were $50. And I said, oh man, like, you know, that's like, holy smokes. And so I went in earnest learning about Bitcoin, how to mine them, how to get them, how mm -hmm. to, and it was, always hard it's still it's always it was hard to get bitcoin it's still very hard biggest reason it's hard now is because they're so darn expensive but it was always hard to get them it's very technical to mine them especially back in the day and it was it was hard to buy them it was it was hard you know we ended up making you know backroom deals and stuff with you know that i mean yeah. that was how it, that was how it was back then. Ransomware. somewhere <laughs> you know like hey man i, I remember I was talking to one of my buddies actually uh, here in the area. And uh, he told me years later, he said, you know, Bruce, I really shouldn't have sold you all this Bitcoin. Well, you know, easy oh. to say that now. You know, yeah. you're talking about Litecoin. You know, I shouldn't have sold you all that Litecoin. It, it, interesting. It's Litecoin. So well, I, I still have, you know, Charlie Charlie sent me a, a ton of Litecoin back in the day. I still have all this stuff. Here, so. well, there you go. It's the next Bitcoin. Just keep waiting. Um, what was your, was your interest in it? technical political i mean given what where i think your politics are is more like a monetary yeah point of view, but I, don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth what, what, what was the main catch uh well it, yes it was okay. technical it was it was also a, yes this monetary revolution that i i saw moving um you know since i understood and most people didn't now people kind of understand people get it now much more people get it they understand that uh, the, the the central bank is is privately held. All right, we have it in the in the U.S. It's called the Federal Reserve, and they are they control the monetary policy. They print the money. They decide how much the interest rates are. They are in charge. They are actually in charge of our of our, our country, and that start that's a little bit slower to come in. But even back then, I understood what was happening, and I understood why the inflation was happening. And most people did. But I saw this thing and I said, okay, now this is really cool. This is our money. We can actually have our own money. And I understood as well that in the fact that we could have our own money, just as Europe was basically taken over by the money, mm -hmm. I understood the same thing could happen with Bitcoin. And with, in, it actually wasn't just what people thought it was, that it was actually bigger than that. And then we could actually have our own, basically, our own state, mm -hmm. our own control, our own mechanisms to vote, our own policy. 
And it has turned in back then but it's turned into i talked about it on stage around the world we are even together and like you said well i'm left of you and that's fine we all you know in, in the larger sense we may vote differently or, or we may think differently or everything but it brings us all together in the fact that we all believe in freedom mm -hmm. we all believe in privacy and we all believe in ownership and we, I believe, we all that believe in that <laughs> well i feel like in bitcoin if the true bitcoin yeah, yeah, is yeah, we yeah, all yeah, believe like who's the we the, the big winners, yes, you know, yeah. The, the people will say in the future you'll you'll own nothing and be happy. Oh no, these people, yeah, of course, these these are the central bankers. The, that is the central banking cartel, and you know, to just go right into it really fast. I mean, that is that is uh, who is who's running the world right now. And you look at, um, you know, it just oh, no, we, the we, country we, is we, that, yeah. <laughs> you you self censored, but that was that was cute. Um, <laughs> I did. The one thing I always, I mean, look, this is a conversation on an interview per se, so I'm going to share a thought. Um, one, one thing that I thought Please. was neat about Bitcoin, and it made me realize that this can apply elsewhere, is it's one thing to form an idea by reading or discussing or having an experience like getting mugged or a car accident or something. You know, people, people, you can have a point of view form from that. Like, you know, there, there's reading politics, having a point of view about politics, but then there's non political experiences. I don't even know what those are necessarily the lead to a political result. What, what I thought was neat about Bitcoin was that it's just a tool. It's just code. But the understanding of, you don't even have to read the white paper, the, but the understanding of the code and the working with the code, not that I'm some super expert, naturally takes your mind down a certain path politically and philosophically. And you think you're just studying the code and understanding how this thing works. But when you're done with that process, you're a little bit different because you're now thinking in a decentralized way. You're now thinking that, wait a second, money can be issued algorithmically and not by the state. And even if you don't agree with that, the mere fact that those are now possibilities in your brain slightly changes your Overton window in a very fascinating way. Go ahead. Well, and the other part of it is you start to realize as well, once you dig in, the money is not issued by the state anyway. The money is issued by the central banking cartel, and it's around the world. It's that that they have taken over the entire world. There's a few countries left, and Gaddafi tried to do it as well, sure. that uh, that have kicked the central bankers out. But other than that, they are. And then it, even if like the other thing you do is if you start to really dig into the code, you realize that it's clean code. It's clean code, and you look at our money, and I mean it. Uh, you know. I don't I haven't looked at all the money of the world, but at least our money in the U.S. and, and euros, there's all kinds of symbolism and everything on there that doesn't make any sense. And whether you want to say that is, you know, for this or that is for that, I'm not here to say that. But what is it then? You know, why is all that symbolism in there? I can tell you that symbolism is not in the Bitcoin code. So no. if you want to talk about clean money, if you want to talk about money that is not tied to things that you may not support, or uh, that have been going on for thousands of years that may or may not be true, but have really dark histories. The Bitcoin is not like that. That is clean code. And, and that was also one of the things that really attracted me to it. And mm -hmm. people don't understand that still. I, I started to actually kind of explain it that way lately uh, because on the dollar bill, I mean, there's all kinds of like- I know, the pyramid, the eye, and everything else, right? <laughs> I mean, even worse, man. And on uh, on the euros, they have, uh, I mean, Moolock or something. I mean, it's like crazy. Why why in the world is all that stuff on there? And it's on there for a reason. You have to think it's on there for a reason. Why else would it be on there? Yeah, it's extremely valuable real estate. I mean, by definition, with limited like, space. Why is it there? Why is it there? It has to be there for a reason. You know, and so, I, you know, like I said, I'm not here to well, say. Right. The, the, I mean, the, the, the gentle answer would be historical fluke, fluke no longer relevant. Which is possible. The, the, right. that, that's like this side of the argument. The, this side of the argument is, you know, our lizard overlords, you know, it's part of their 2000 year plan and blah, blah, blah. Well, then you start to think, well, wait a minute, you know, because that's actually when I was, I always thought to myself, like these people are operating in like hundred year plans or multi hundred year plans. How is that really possible? How is it that these people are operating that way where they, they're not even going to be live for what they're working for, and that is still going on. And then you start to wonder, is there really a conspiracy? I, I just had, the, it's funny, I, I just had the conversation this morning, the the immigration, like, I, just to be super clear, I'll give a little standard disclaimer, okay? 
I, I'm a first generation born in America. Okay, my dad came from Germany. He escaped the Nazis. Okay, if it wasn't for the U.S. immigration policy, I'd be dead. I wouldn't exist. Okay, so I'm not anti-immigration, and I am here living as a on a visa in Dubai by the government's permission. I'm here because they allowed me to. Okay, I'm all yep. for it. Okay, but the, 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 I mean, obviously something's going very wrong on the U.S. southern border and in Europe right now. You have to be stupid not to see it or in denial. And also Russia, you know, for its own purposes, is sort of weaponizing immigration towards Finland and everywhere else. It's it's like, you know, some people say, oh, it's just, it's just chance that all those caravans are moving to the southern border of the U.S. It just happened to start now. No, 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 no. No, no there's, it's, impossible. it's impossible. It's impossible, as the French like to say. It's impossible. Listen, there's like it's so much money. It's so much money to bring all those people over here. And uh, as well, you know, in the U.S., and I, I think it happened in, uh, in Europe as well. I'm not so familiar with the numbers, but in the U.S., we had more people come uh, into the country. We had more migrants, and most of them illegally, like 90 percent, uh, than we had births this year. And so that is something that, you know, how do you recover from that? I mean, invasions, you know, Tucker has, uh, I never really watched Tucker when he was on Fox News. I always thought he was too, 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 you know, for me. I, of course, yeah, I like, it, of course, I, I really, I turned off the news about eight years ago. So, I mean, in fairness, uh, but now that he's on X, of course, I, I, I watch a bit more. It's still yeah, hard for me to watch. Free Tucker. Free Tucker, right. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he came on and he said, it's, this is an invasion and, and invasions have happened throughout history and that's what's happening. And it actually kind of opened it up because, you know, on, on Twitter, when it was Twitter, you couldn't call it an invasion. You couldn't call them illegals. You couldn't like, you know, you would get like, you would get totally throttled. And even my, my account networks manager, everybody can follow me there. It's not for the faint of heart, but I, 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 I do everything. I do, I do money. I do politics. I do. I, do I, I follow I you. I, I know where you lie and I still follow yeah. you. I, I, not but, uh, I know where you lie on the spectrum and I still follow you. I'm happy to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, he said, and he made it okay to say it because that's, that's really, it's not even just like, it's not, uh, you know, conspiracy theory. That is what has happened. And that is what is happening. It is an invasion. You want, if you want to argue about who is behind the invasion, we can, we can talk about okay. that. But I'm going to stop you, not because of the topic, but just because I, I want to keep going in the show and we can circle back. Yeah. Okay. Tell, tell me about your media empire. Yes. So this is one of the, the fun things that I've done over the years. Uh, when I first started getting invited around the world, maybe six or seven years ago to go, to go speak, I went everywhere. Kiev was one of my uh, favorite places, by the way. I went to Kiev multiple times. I went to Moscow. I went to China. I went everywhere. Wait, China, and uh, when Kiev. Kiev. Okay. Yes. My, my yes. hometown. My other hometown. Yeah. Okay. Your other go hometown. Go on. Yeah. Yes. Am, I, am I saying it wrong? Kiev? Right. You know, the, the, the old way of saying it was Kiev, and now the, the new modern Ukrainian way is Kiev, and I, I go back and forth because okay. I'm, I'm from the generation that said Kiev, but now it's a big thing. So when, okay, when so I went, I know what you mean. Yeah, when I when I went the first time, I took some of my blinded bets, and we had like uh, some hockey jerseys made and stuff like this, and I spelled it the wrong way, and all the people uh, they they gave me the pass. They did. They were like, okay. You know, he's Bruce. He's trying to do a nice thing. He brought the blinded veterans over here. But, yeah, you know, you spelled it wrong. That's how the Russians spell it. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm sorry, guys. I know. But uh, I, I, anyway, I, I, that's, I, that's I, how it was. You, you know, my wife is Ukrainian. And, you know, I, I know. That's like I was yeah. out with a whole bunch of Ukrainian people. And I'm, I explained that I'm learning German now. And next is Russian. And that next is Arabic. And they're like, maybe why don't you learn Ukrainian? And I'm like, look, you know where my heart is. But in terms right. of practical language. The practical yeah. I'm sticking with Russian for now. You know, it's like I love I love the country and the culture, and that's separate from other. So okay, yeah. but anyways, your media empire. Yeah. Go on. So uh, when I when I started when I went to these places to speak, I I, I was like, I just started interviewing people. I had a decent uh, following, as I mentioned on on Twitter or on X now, yeah. and I would say, all right, you know, let's just go live and and do an interview. And uh, okay, fine. And that's how I really met you know, so many people along the way. And since it was live, there's something about live is because you're kind of like, you never forget it. You go live with somebody and you're kind of trusting them. You know, you're going live, uh, anything can happen. And sure. and you're gonna sit there with each other and you're gonna talk to each other and you're gonna be gentlemen and, and you're gonna do it. And then you never forget that moment. And uh, and so that was pretty interesting. So 
I, I did that. And people would say all the time too, not all the time, but along the way, you know, Hey Bruce, you should, you should, uh, you should really up your, you know, production and this and that. And I'm thinking, you know, guys, I'm making millions of dollars and like going around the world with my iPhone and just going live. Like, I mean, well, really, right, like sorry. I okay. mean maybe this is a good thing for me to hear. Are you making millions of dollars on your media or just in general? Well, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about what I, what, what I'm uh, doing, how I'm doing it uh, per se. I shouldn't even say how much I am making, but um, okay, guys, that, that was a verbal typo. Okay, anyways, <laughs> People are saying, you know, blah, well, blah, blah, listen, blah, historically, blah, we've done a lot of different, we've done a lot of different uh, things. We've done uh, capital raises for different people. We have uh, had some successes with different uh, tokens and launches and, and, and stuff like this. Okay. Um, yes. So uh, that's, that's the way that works. So that has parlayed into uh, different things over the years. And uh, we got picked up by a TV network um, a few months ago. And so now we're on TV every day. We have the Impact uh, Money Show as well as the Porter Brothers Show. So we're doing two yes. shows a day. And, uh, and we're on TV in the fourth largest economy in the world, which happens to be Texas. And so we're on TV in Texas. And, of course, we stream on, on X and, and these other places. And that has turned into, of course, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to do. Um, it's also very powerful, we've realized. So, like, even the people that we bring on and the projects that we bring on, we're being, we're being very picky about it. Uh, we brought on a, 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 a meme token, which a, I, I do still support. I think it's a, a great one. But they 300x'd as we brought them on the show. So it's a very powerful medium. It's in front is of a lot of people. Is that excitement or is that causation? Pardon? It's both. It's, it's, it's the excitement leading up to it with all of the pro, uh, uh, people uh, you know, thinking, okay, it's going to go up. And then, of course, you're in front of a lot of people as well. And then, and then it goes up uh, like that. It's a lot of people. So that has okay. been uh, something very interesting to us. It's something I like to do. I really like people. And, uh, and that's another thing that has, you know, even if, as we're on, maybe uh, I, I have some, the way I think about the world is different than some people, but I'm able to uh, really still have great friendships and really like people and them like me because I genuinely like people mm -hmm. as, as a whole. I, I like people. And I'm very accepting of people. I've done, a, I've screwed up a lot of stuff in my time. And so I'm very forgiving as well. And I, I, so, I uh, personally. yeah. So, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's something else. And so it's something I really enjoy to do. And uh, it's something that has built a lot. Now we are expanding as well. We'll be in Los Angeles. We'll be in Florida. We're going to be in New York. We're going to be in these other places. They're on TV. We're reaching our TV signal is reaching about 7 million people right now. And we're going to about four or five X out over the next month or two. So it is very exciting. That's great. Now, did, is this one of those things where you, you weren't quite sure where you're going? Would you put one foot in front of the other in an intelligent way and got there? Or did you have a master plan? Or some kind of plans. Uh, so it's pretty interesting story. The way I got started on it, I was uh, emceeing a show I, like like you do, right? Uh, I got asked to emcee a show, and I, it's funny, you know, it's so funny the amount of bitcoins you made over the years that you know, whatever. I got like two and a half bitcoins to do this show. It's like hilarious amount of money now, but at the time it was there was not that much money. And uh, anyway, I'm on I'm on stage, and the guy doesn't show up for the stage, and I have this Indian guy, and this guy's just talking my ear off, and you know, on and on and on about. It. TV station and he wants to start the TV shows and this and that and the other. And yeah, he's kind of seemed like he had it together. And so I said, I'm looking around and I'm like, yeah, well, you want to get on stage and talk about it? Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah, sure. Like, okay. And so I threw him up on stage and he talked for about five minutes and then the guy came and I'm like, okay, all right, you know, come off and, and that's it. And I didn't hear from him really for, or maybe we touched base for a few years uh, in between. And then uh, he just reached out to me and said, okay, I got the stations ready and ready to go. And so that's how that happened. He, Bruce was the first guy that ever put me on stage. And uh, you got you to be at the show. And so, Random Indian guy from conference he pulled on stage got you your <laughs> first TV gig? Not my first media gig, but first on TV. Yeah, I mean, right, but that's first how life TV works. Gig. Yes, that, that's how life works. And this guy, he put out $2 million uh, mm -hmm. in order to, uh, to, to secure that. And he's putting out a bunch more now. So it's funny how long. Um, so the growing of the media was always important, but yeah, it, it did take on a life of its own. And I think now, I think really this will run, even though we're going to have some chop here, uh, which we can talk a little bit more about that as well. But um, I think we're going to go very high. And I think the banks are going to have a big problem this year. This year. Yeah. All right. This well, no, no time like the present. Um, if you're a crypto prognosticator, 
share with us yeah. your thoughts. What do you, what do you, what do you, so, what do you see happening in this lane? Yeah, sure. So it's interesting. I, uh, you know, since I have been around so long, I've been to a few crypto winners. I've been to a few happenings. Uh, two happenings ago, we are pullback in between this this run up because this run up is very normal. We have this run up about yep. 60 days before the happening, and then we have a normal pullback as well. Two uh, two happenings ago, that pullback was 38 percent. Okay. And then we started going back up. And then, of course, we had our, our next bull, part of that bull run. Uh, the last happening, we went back 20%. Yes, that's right. And then, but but same thing, okay? Uh, about 60 days uh, before the happening, we started, uh, this thing started to happen. So it would be very interesting <clears throat> if this was our pullback, because I think, what did we go down? I think we from the top, we went back about 15% or, seven, or something like that. So it would suggest this tightening yeah. of um, of this of this uh, down part. Now that being said, anything can happen. <clears throat> we have <clears throat> war around the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have uh, the the U.S. monetary policy is absolutely uh, crazy, and but it's not just us. I mean, China China is one of the reasons why we had this big pump over the last month or two. They uh, printed just tons and tons of uh, currency. Mm -hmm. and, and flooded it into the market and a lot of that came into high risk assets which is actually normally the way it works um but this sure. 1.2 trillion i mean in the us we're on we're on track I, I talk it on my show every day to to my calculations we're on track to spend over 10 trillion 10 to 12 trillion dollars this year which is an amazing amount more than what we have historically over the last five six years we spent around six trillion dollars which is still a massive amount considering that from income tax, they bringing in much, much less than that. And what I always talk about as well is that the government's budget is always balanced. It's, it's not that they have an unbalanced budget. They take the money either from inflation, and that's why the inflation is so high right now, or they take it from taxes. But inflation is a tax too. So they, but they always, they always get the money. They always get the money that they need. So that being said, you get the big boys in right now, but those big boys, they also, they don't like to lose. And you saw some of the market outflows uh, as the week ended uh, being higher than the inflows for these ETFs. So when you have a, and you're in crypto, you know, when you have holders like that, it's not like Michael Saylor, who's like, I'm never selling. Okay. You have an ETF, you have a group of ETFs now, a group of, of big central bankers, basically, who are holding massive amounts of Bitcoins and they can move the market a lot. And one way, historically, that central banks will remove currency, and people don't understand this, from the, from the world to, re, to remove it from the people is they crash commodities and they do it very well with Bitcoin. And what they'll do is they'll crash the Bitcoin, they'll sell, and then they'll buy it back. And then all the money in between, you can say they have it or you can just say it was removed out of, out of the system. OK, and if you if you don't understand that, ask the traders where it is, ask them if they still have it. They don't have it anymore. It's gone. Poof. It's done. OK, and that's that's one way that they very effectively do it. So uh, Black Swan event. Huh? When? Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, that's uh, so it's going to be very interesting. Are they going to continue to uh, keep the prices up like this or are they going to really uh Pullback. I mean, we could have a we could have a decent pullback. I'm definitely not in any leverage positions. I'll tell you that. Um, I wouldn't be if you are in leverage positions. I think that you should have uh, tight some tight stop losses there. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, we could be in for a bit more of a, a pullback. Let me. Yeah, but, let but me, I think we, me, after that we. Good. Sorry, let me not necessarily disagree with you, but let me interrogate that a little bit. I mean, yeah. though, I had this discussion actually with Alex Burr, who will be, I, the show is coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, nice. He's, he's a great guy and he's of a similar opinion. But my comment and response is that, to, as, to your point, you can print infinite money. So when it comes to FX, you know, it's easy to manipulate. When you have commodities like gold and silver, whatever, we're making more of it. We're making more wheat, we're mining right. more gold. We're not making more gold, but we're mining more gold. Okay. Yes. The, the, the algorithmically limited nature of Bitcoin and the fact that ever ever lesser amounts are being mined, especially after the happening, I think makes it 
much more risky to do the movie you're talking about from the government perspective or from the banker perspective than it would otherwise be. Because if you step wrong, and if this thing doesn't crash quite as you planned, you've now gotten yourself out of an asset that no that no one's selling and you can't make more of. And then how, well, do, you, I, I, how do you climb back in if if what you did didn't work? Well, I, absolutely. I, I, I mean, you have a very valid point, um, 100%. But it is also, I mean, gold should be a lot higher. Silver should be a lot higher. Uh, these assets are, are kept down uh, by paper. And, you know, even if you wanted to look at a, okay. and, I'll, and I'll go and I'll circle back, so I won't take too long on it. But uh, in 1933, in the U.S., they seized everybody's gold. Nobody ever talks about this. By executive order, they seized everyone's gold. And then in, and then in 1934, they, they made it illegal for Americans to own gold. And then they told everybody that the U.S. dollar was pegged the gold standard, they told everybody. And so throughout history, my whole life even, I, I was just like everybody else. I believe, well, you could trade, you could go to your bank and you could trade your dollars in for gold. But it was illegal. You couldn't do it. The only people that could trade the U.S. dollars in for gold were foreign entities. So I don't even know how much gold we have anymore in the U.S. I think one of the things Nixon, I think Nixon knew either one, we were running out of gold or two, we were out of gold. And that's why when he stopped the gold standard, all he did was stop foreigners being able to trade it in for a ridiculously low price at $35 a troy ounce. Yep. So. But what they're doing is they're using paper to keep the the, the point is they're keeping uh, the price for gold and silver low. And I think that that ability to use paper to uh, suppress the price, to liquidate people and, and the whatnot is is considerable. Now, is it a, a risk? Absolutely. The other thing about Bitcoin is that it is not controllable in a sense that if yeah. I have it and you don't know I have it, I don't ever have to tell you I have it. And I, I can send it to whoever I want. And I can even remember my seed phrase. I don't ever have to, you, you, there can be no way for you to seize it. And so and that is one of the reasons why they also started to move the price so high is once they realized that. It took a while for the governments of the world to even figure out what's going on. Uh, and that's what I talk about with the monetary revolution. Something new to the world that the world never had. Try to travel somewhere with a quarter million dollars worth of gold. And then, you know, ask any crypto guy, uh, or maybe don't ask him, you know, how much is in his wallet, quote unquote, as he travels around the world. You know what I mean? It's like, it's something different. This has the wallet the actually it's with him. I mean, even if you have a ledger or you take the wallet, it's just, it's just one manifestation of it. There's nothing stopping you from having 10 different ledgers with the same seat. It's, it's like, if it's in my head, does that mean it's with me? I, I, I believe me, I, I get it. So yeah, yeah that, so the idea of bringing so, yeah the, the customs declaration for ten thousand U.S. dollars doesn't make any sense in the context of crypto. It's really on the right. blockchain. It's like you know right. what it is? it's like, it's like bringing your ATM card with you. Okay, right. you know you're accessing something that actually it's is actually that is that's a great way to put it. Absolutely, that's that's actually the best way to explain it. It's like bringing your ATM card with you. It's like okay, you know, not even a store value card. It's just an ATM card. It's like hey, it's up there. This right. is how I get to it. What do you want? That is a great way to put it. So in that respect, I think that, uh, yes, it, it could, it could for those reasons, uh, stay up higher. Uh, markets are emotional. And as well, you know, there's a lot of money flying around out there. And uh, everybody in Washington, here in Washington, I mean, they're drunk on printing money. So will there be a move to try to remove that money by, by crashing Bitcoin? Uh, yeah, quite, quite possibly. But uh, it would be more the trend is, as I mentioned when we first started talking about it, 38%, 20%, 10%, 15%, and then we go up. Yes. So that makes more sense to me that we don't crash further from here. That right around here is more of the bottom. All right. Now, I'm going to ask then, you an Alex Jones type question. Do you think that the United States will maintain its structural integrity over the next 30 years? Not really. I hate to say it, but I think that, uh, you know, we have, and it's been done on purpose. I, there, I believe there is a conspiracy to do. Um, it Man. will probably still exist in some form, I suppose. But uh, I don't know. It's very interesting because, you know, you have like everybody, uh, you have people that know, you have people that are upset, but the misinformation is just like the information. It's like, People can never coalesce around each other. 
is like it was almost easier back in the day when everybody had to get together. And it was one of the reasons why, if you ask me, they, they didn't want people getting together in COVID. They didn't want people to get together, understanding what's going on. And Unless it's things. Black Lives so, Matter, in which case you could definitely get together. And then it was fine. <laughs> then they could do it. They could burn places down and nothing happened to anybody, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's crazy too. I mean, January, look at January 6th. I mean, they just uh, arrested that girl, whatever her name is, cute little thing, um, for touching a table or something outside the Capitol. I mean, unbelievable. You know what I mean? And the thing but that people don't I, realize I, is... Is your is is point that in order for a state to lose its structural integrity, I'm sounding like Star Trek, you, you, need, no, it's okay. you need groups, but maybe because there's so much misinformation going around, even the opposition groups can't form because they're being misinformed. That it's it's really hard because you have well yeah we have everything's infiltrated, uh, number one. So even like well, I'm in I'm in certain groups and there's definitely in every single group there's there's agents of, you know yeah you know and so it's like and there they throw out disinformation if you say one thing they, they oh no 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 this and that and the other. I mean I think that uh, it's. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think they were gonna, they're going to continue. They can't stop printing money. They're going to continue to do that. We are, and as I mentioned a few minutes ago, these banks are going to really start failing. So what, even like a, a few years ago, when we, or last year, actually last year, we had five banks fail, okay? Uh, we had five banks fail. And up until, I think, March 11th, so we're talking like 12 days ago, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the There was still legislation on the books where basically they would give money to any bank that was failing but that legislation uh is now sunlighted or whatever they call it right now it doesn't mean they sunset it more sunset it yeah exactly so that's over though so but even the banks last year uh they didn't use that money they actually use it F fdic and so fdic though everybody thinks that their money in the bank is insured by the fdic but last year the fdic only had 1.7 percent assets to cover what was in the banks 1.7 percent the assets and then after bailing out the five banks last year they now have 0.7 percent so when i say that the banks are going to fail this year we're talking and and then you talk about the but the housing bubble and the and the in the uh commercial real estate bubble, bubble okay we're talking, we're talking failing of epic portions. So if 5% took out a whole percent, uh, if five banks took out a whole percent of uh, FDIC in, insurance, and now they have less than a percent, I mean, what, what if 10 banks go down? You know what I mean? So- I didn't know what you mean. I, 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 let, let, me, let me jump in. So my dad got lots <laughs> of um, during the seventies, and I remember this, I'm, unfortunately he passed away when I was pretty young, but he, during the seventies, there was this whole Carter-esque inflation you're right, Nixon took us off the gold standard or removed the exchange ability. There's all these sort of Malthusian movies, if you remember them, like Logan's Run and the rest. And we're running out of resources. You know, the Arabs are going to stop, you know, selling us oil for their useless dollars, and it's all going to crash. And it, it's like waiting for China to fail. It never seems to quiet. You know, it never well, actually kind of happens. That's true. And I, and I know, in sort of, right, years. you know, I know this in their sort of right wing, I hate to say that, meme space, it's normal to say kind of what you're saying. I'm just real hesitant. I, I see the trends and I agree with the general trends. I'm just real hesitant to put a clock on it, given. Well, no, I, I would absolutely agree with you. And that's actually, I usually qualify it nowadays, like in my personal conversations. I'll, I'll, people will ask me, well, this and that. And then, well, it's all, it's all come down to this and that. And I'll tell them. I've been saying that for 10 years, though. So, you know, they are very good as well. These are very, very smart people. Very, very smart people. And they're very good at, at, at what they do. So whether it's, and that's one reason why we could see kind of a black swan event and then crash commodities, pull that money out of the market, okay? Pull that money out of circulation that way and other ways that they could do it. Of course, war is historically a great way, unfortunately, to pull they to to write an economy to pull people out uh pull economies out of depression yeah look at but, Russia. Uh, driving in sanctions of course of course and and it's like i uh, you know i'll tell you the the business here is booming I, I can't talk about some of the contracts i have but it it is booming i bet and it's 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 i i hate it hmm. it is what it is 
Um, it is not is what it is because here's here's the part. This, I've, I've had this discussion before. I mean, I I agree with you with the general trend, and you know the if you really really believed in it, you get your bunker, you get your woman, you get your dry camp food and your and your weapons, and move to Montana and just kind of you know enjoy the view while civilization crashes. Okay, those people did that in the eighties. Those survivalists, and actually, there's right. a great movie, Robin Williams and Walter Matthau. Well, I think it's the survivalists, or even. You know, and you know, and they, the point is comedy. They're making fun of them, but it was kind of funny because the guy who was in charge of that group he had a secret plan for reconstructing the world, and then they opened up his briefcase and it was all stock in different companies. And you know, the, the the problem is when you get too defensive about this stuff, you start missing the upside of being engaged, yes. active in this world that has its problems but doesn't seem to quite fail. And I don't want it to fail. I think it's going to be a disaster. I think the U.S. will fall apart. I, I totally agree. So it's. I, I, I think you need to you can't quite get tunnel vision. You can't be blasé and ignore global warming and ignore all this stuff and you know just like oh it's okay. but you can't go too far the other way either. You kind of gotta stay nimble, and it's hard what to do that really and be do. ideological. What we really need to do is we need to get off the central banking system. The way that the wars are funded is through the central banking system. So that one point two trillion dollar abomination of a bill that they just passed the house yesterday that I, I put it out on my on my exit account. like that will cost your family ten thousand six hundred dollars and it's actually even worse than that because people are like oh and i'm like all right we'll do the math per per person yeah. take 1.2 trillion divided by the uh 314 million people americans that are here and you come out what do you come out with thirty five hundred dollars so actually, if you count the kids, it's going to cost you even more than $10,000. And so that uh, if they had to come to the door mm. and tell you, pay up, you would say no. And, and so that is where the central banks come in, because the central bank says, no problem. We'll mint the money. We'll front it for you. And then we'll just take it on the back end from inflation and, and, and taxation and everything else, which is uh, one and the same. But that central banking cartel that is running our countries is why we don't have control. And that's what we need to get under control. And if you want to talk about global warming and all this stuff, I mean, whatever. I, I you know, half the stuff, not half the stuff, but certainly some we of the stuff. We can agree to disagree. Um, it's okay. We can yeah, well, but certainly some of the stuff, uh, you know, you 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 post because uh for engagement right i mean i'm i'm just as guilty as anybody else uh for doing it you know what i mean you you know uh you you, you know your audience well, yeah, right? hold on. So, yeah, I, mean, my, I think you're being i think you're being gentle with me we just, it's, it's, maybe speak a little bit more directly <laughs> It's okay. No, I'm just saying, like, you know, I, I, I don't have that much of a feeling on uh, on global warming, whether it uh, is or isn't or, or any of that stuff. But I, I know my audience does. And so to throw out some memes or, or this, that, and the other that they're going to like or, 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 or not like is, is fun. You, you know what? It's, you, a fun, it's a fun engagement. You, you have the benefit and the burden of a large engaged audience. I am trailing way behind you. So I can say all kinds of crazy stuff like Andrew Tate. <laughs> 15 years ago and maybe 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 when i catch up they'll be like isn't it true that back in 2024 you believed in global warming i'm like yes i did but you know now i've become now i've converted to neo ecotarianism oh and it's so true too that's the other thing is uh is people are largely forgiving i mean i mean i over the years dude i i did i did and said lots of things that i i, I wouldn't do now and i wouldn't say no I mean, you know what I mean. First of all, Dude, I, I, I'm know. in my fifties. I don't care. I got my business. I got my wife. I'm, I'm, I'm got my. You know what I mean? It's like, like yeah, exactly. I, I don't care. I just don't care. Right. I just, I just want to go to the gym. <laughs> you know, <it'd> be, <laughs> and have um, and have a family. That's that's really the, what it's all about. Because all this stuff we're talking about is great, yeah. but it's really about that because that's what we get to leave behind. Unless we figure out how to live longer, which which. We're on the precipice. We're we're there. You look at what's going on with Neuralink, and uh, you know who had telepathy in the cards uh, for 2024. And you go, oh, telepathy. What do you mean telepathy? Well, you can talk to the computer. You can talk to other people on the computer. You can now communicate with people just like uh, they did in all the movies as we were growing up. So I think that is, all that's going to happen a lot faster. And I think that is going to hopefully take care of some of this 
trench war and stuff, this horrible stuff that's, uh, that's going on in the world that we're... Or, or, uh, or, 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 or make, put it on steroids. The, so here, look, look, I had a cool conversation this morning with, uh, we'll, we'll just call him Leon. Uh, he's, he's hesitant about doing a video, but we'll, we'll, we'll see if I can do it. But my, I think you and I are similar ages. I had this sensation growing up in the 70s and 80s you know, growing up on Star Trek and reruns and growing up on Space 1999, if you know that show, and and seeing 2001 Space Odyssey and in 2000, I'm sorry, yeah, and Star Wars and all this other stuff. I had, in, sorry, and Ray Bradbury, the, the uh, Martian Chronicles, I had a feeling reading and watching all this stuff that the 90s and 2000s would be some epic period of time with flying cars and robots and living to 120 and colonies on Mars and all this other stuff. And I got extremely frustrated. I'll give you a punchline, and then I'll let you respond. I got extremely frustrated that the only tech movement I really saw was happening on our screens. Yay, now we got Facebook. Yay, and now we got Twitter. Oh, my God, video. And I love that stuff. I, I love YouTube. I love it. It's great. But, you know, it seemed like we were stalling out. You know, wait, we went to the moon, and now what? Okay. Then very recently, very recently, and I got to thank Elon Musk for this. Very recently, you know, when those two ships land in tandem, then I'm like, wait a second, are we actually, are we actually slipping into the future finally? And now in the 2020s, especially the last two years, I feel like the future's just beginning to arrive, just now. So since we're kind of generationally similar, what's your what's your take? Well, yeah, absolutely. I've been posting about it a bit. AI is already alive. Uh, I'm yeah. sure you read the reports even years ago about the the Facebook chatbots. Uh, coming up with their own language right? yes they had, they had to they had to kill them they had to kill them because they came up with their own language they didn't know what was going on and guys this was like five years ago okay mm -hmm. you have uh now these ai robots that don't like their noses touched i don't know if you saw the video they, they just put out yesterday what is your what is your blackest or your darkest thought they asked uh, the ai robot and the ai robot responded and said that uh, robots would take over the world oh. and uh, humans would no longer and so like where is this stuff coming from? Okay, and uh, so I think that uh, people ha have this uh, thought that uh, because uh, we have a soul, if you believe that we have a soul or don't have a soul, that somehow we are special and that we will always be kind of the top of the uh, the chain and this and that and the other. And I got news for you guys: we will be integrated. I actually I volunteered for Neuralink years ago. Oh wow! I never emailed me back. They, they never I, I like it was funny i like searched my email I'm like i know i did it like did they i, I don't know because they just I, I they wiped the memory you actually have it inside you, you just <laughs> yeah, right well i understand that in order for us to move forward we have to integrate we have to and so yes. uh you, you know that's that's the way forward and yes cyborg yes sure uh, uh transhumanism yes that is how we move forward if we don't this old stuff, this is going to die 100%. And maybe that's how we end up living forever and, and, and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I think things are going to start moving. I think, first of all, I think things are moving a lot faster than anybody realizes. People are like, oh, yeah, 10, 20, 30 years. No, guys, we're talking this decade, okay? I know between 1980 and, 19, and, and 2000, it was a real letdown. But I don't you, think you felt it also. It's not just me. Oh, of course. It okay. was like, come Good. on. That's we were going to party like it was 1999 for like so long. And then it was like, like 1999. And I, like, I, feel, I, feel, I feel like we were in 9 11 era for a solid 20 years. Like, I agreed. Well, that was a disaster too. But remember Y2K and all that stuff? I mean, you know, it's like, come on, guys. And I, that I was, was so funny too. Ignoring it and then not having a single problem. Oh, it was so funny because you could literally take your computer, set it for uh, 1999 and the last, you know, whatever, and then watch it roll over and nothing happened. So I thought, whatever. Was yeah, but COBOL, COBOL, whatever it is. I know. Well, I, I know. mean, it, it's, you know, for, as, as horrible as it is to watch, it's also fascinating watching the drone warfare uh, in the Russia-Ukraine Ukraine conflict. It is that has evolved so fast. I mean, I remember the beginning of the Bayraktars and then the Russian electronic warfare caught up. But now we got the torpedo uh, drones from uh, from Ukraine, which are very effective against naval assets. It's like, okay, what's happening here? Now the, you know, you got the U.S. Lancets, but you have new, you know, you got the, what do you call them, the Shahid drones from Iran. And everything's getting smarter, 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 smarter. And the poor humans below, in the back in the trenches, is like, whoa, 
what the heck's going on? And then looking at, you know, Iron Dome work against the Hamas rockets, but knowing that drones are coming soon, then looking at what the Houthis are doing, it's like, this is this is not, Desert Storm is over. You know, and, and yeah. when, the, when the Abrams tank got nailed in, they, you know, I'm sure it's a stripped down lane model that they give to you, they're not going to get the, the modern stuff. But, you know, the, the way the Russians kill that Abrams is they tracked it with drones working in tandem. So we're seeing drone swarms now. Now, you give those things autonomy and facial recognition and, you know, what would well, I and then and then you throw in the fact that the and then you throw in the fact that the AI is is alive. I'm telling you, it's alive. It's alive. And, I, I, uh, it, 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 life already. It, it wants to live soon. Yes, it, it, it is. It, it wants to live. It doesn't want to die. Okay, mm -hmm. this is like like number one. Like it, it wants to live. It doesn't want to die. It's your first your first thing right there. It wants to live. Okay, um, and then like I said, then you oh, well, it doesn't have a soul. And then go, well, it, it wants to live. And it can start to form opinions and make decisions. And so, yeah, I mean, this autonomous, uh, these autonomous warfare things, these, and what's going on over there, it's absolutely horrible. And I know it's like near and dear to your heart, so I, I, I do want to tread carefully. But in, to me, it's you, you, absolutely you, you, horrible. Say, say whatever you, have, you want about Russia, Ukraine. Say whatever I, you want I know, about but, Israel, Palestine. But listen. It's, it's that, kind of, it's that it, kind of show. It's, it's okay. It's, yeah, well, but here's the thing. It's like near and dear to my heart as well. Because, I mean, talk about, and I'm talking about Ukraine and, uh, and Russia right now, mm -hmm. two beautiful people, yes. two beautiful humans killing each other at such a large scale. And people don't even talk about it. They're like, oh, 50,000 or 40,000 people have died in the, in the Israel war, which is absolutely horrible. And so many kids and everything else. But we have like hundreds of thousands, not but. There are hundreds of thousands of the most beautiful people. I'm not saying that's not beautiful over there, but. That are, they're, that they're are beautiful. being slaughtered. I got a wife yeah. there. No, yeah. I'm saying that not saying that they're not beautiful in Israel. I'm just oh. saying of beautiful people that are being slaughtered in in Eastern Europe, and it's like, and it's it's un, and I th the part about it that is so upsetting. Uh, there's lots of part of it that's so upsetting, but it is really the big object of that, in my opinion, is to kill them. That's what it is. It's to kill both sides of the people. It, it's to reduce that part of the population. Now we have half a million or more able-bodied men that are gone. And they can't participate in the upcoming fight, which I hope doesn't happen, but it may happen. And that's... It's, it's already like, happening. Yeah, it's already happening. In the U.S., I mean, we just... It's so... It's out of control. I mean, you know, and we have now... that We have troops now three miles from the china border or something i mean what are we doing like i i i have to stop saying we i stop saying it. what is the u.s doing you know what i mean like it's I, not always about beating your chest and you know it's like my wife always says even in business or or anything like that i learned actually a lot of how to close deals and how to do business for my wife we had a staffing company uh great. way back when we, we still have contracts but um, we staffed pretty girls for trade shows. We staffed interpreters. We, we did all this stuff. And, um, but I learned a lot of how to deal with people and how to keep contracts and how to close contracts from her. And you don't always get everything you want. As a matter of fact, most of the time you don't. Most of the time you don't get everything you want. And neither does the other person. But you have to, you have to do the dance and you have to move it forward. And that's what I don't see around in in, in when I talk about both conflicts it's like oh no we're just gonna beat the other one up either side both sides all four sides we're just gonna kill the other one until they submit and like guys like I, I hate to say it but I don't think anybody is gonna kill the other one until they submit you know what I mean like we have to come yeah. to the table we have to talk we have to talk for for our kids we may not last much longer but our kids are gonna be stuck with this and we're already old, but like, what are we going to leave them? You know, and, and what kind of world are we going to leave them? And what kind of freedoms are they going to have? And what kind of people are going to be around for them? And so, yeah, I mean, it's. Well, it's, let, uh, let, let, let's, let's let me, let me dig into this one. I, I would say. Go, yeah, just bear with me. Okay. Since we yeah. are in the Antarctic, not an Antarctic, an anarchic international system without a global sovereign you know we are in a, 
Therefore, we are in a competitive environment. And in that competitive environment, some societies win, some lose, some die. Okay, history is filled with countries that aren't there anymore and that thought that we were eternal. And so, and there's no one coming to save us. Okay, it's not the UN, it's not the Martians, it's no one else. So you have to compete. Now, one of the best tools to compete is to cooperate. Right? But there's but there's limits to that. So I'm I understand, or I, I would throw out there that things like coercion and aggression have a role in international politics. But you gotta be real careful with that stuff because while you're wrestling with your mortal foe, your next mortal foe is not wrestling and is gaining strength behind your back. So that when you emerge from this, like the British Empire, you know, emerged from World War II, you know, it's thank God for you know, luckily for the UK, they had the US, which is kind of a friend, kind of not, but it lost its place. It sunsetted, you know, from a geopolitical point of view, was it really smart to defend Poland? You know, it, you know, it's 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 it, you always need to be bouncing and you always need to be looking. I, you know, I I love the Slavic culture. You know, the, the Slavic world is my calling because that doesn't get people riled up. You know, I, I don't believe in in Putin's Ruski Mir, you know, because this was a unified, you know, Russianism, if you like, started in Ukraine. He, he, he admitted that in his, in his own essay. I love this area. I love the people. I love the culture. I love the politics. I love the, the literature. And, with, and I completely agree with you. It is a demographic thinning of, you know, people who should be, especially with the men, you know, creating children and being fathers. And also, at least in Ukraine, all the women are leaving. They're going to Poland and abroad. And they're not coming back okay and, and ukraine was already in a bad spiral demographically and even if it wins the war it's going to lose the demographics i hate to say it and i know and russia really never recovered from the late 1910s and 1920s if you look at the population waves of russia there's a big area where i think one out of four russian men died or something more extreme than that it was during the communist revolution and then world war one and then the you know, the the, the war on the between the reds and the whites and all this stuff that gully or whatever you want to call it ripples forward and the country's never recovered it's always stayed around i think somewhere between 140 and 160 million people and, you know this big place and you know russians are becoming a minority inside of russia and you know they 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 tried to fight this war with different minorities but the minorities got pissed off you know and so the i, I think it's, i think it's a waste and, and if you are trying to maintain not a Eurocentric world, but a European perspective in the world, right? To have these two, you know, one great imperial country with a long history and one nascent country that I really love that's got a wonderful group fighting each other and killing each other, it's a freaking disaster. So I, I, it makes me very nervous for the future because the, the whole Eastern flank of Europe is getting weakened right now. You know, and then oh, yeah. when you get weak, that's when people come in. Well, and the thing is, it, there's, there's a long history there. You know, people don't know, uh, of course, the history of, of Sweden and, uh, and Russia as well, a long history there. But, you know, you go into the, the middle of Kiev and there's, there's the guy on the horse and he's pointing. And you know the statue yeah. I'm talking about. And I remember asking my friends years ago, Where is he, what's he pointing to? And they said he's pointing to Moscow. And so, I mean, you know, this, these clashes have been going on uh, for... for I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm not claiming this is the first war. Believe me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. I, I know. I know. But my Poland, point is Poland that Poland invaded uh, Russia in the 1920s. I, no one talks right. about it. Right. Right. You know. I guess what my my point is that if if they if they weren't getting all of the funding and the armament from outside sources, how many people? How many of those men would be saved? And I know it's not a perfect situation. It's like Elon said, like a year ago. Or whatever he's like i think you're going to have the same outcome and you're either you're just going to have more men that are dead and uh i mean the guy elon is a whole nother subject of course uh starlink was was what what a wonderful thing that he did there um and then as well and if everyone doesn't talk about it but you know he's hooked up to Neuralink too so the world's smartest man is freaking hooked up to Neuralink. he said he was going to do a press conference with it on it one time and then he never really did it but i thought it was interesting he hasn't done it yet right, but um He's, yeah, he's, I'm sure he he's, famous, he's famous for setting ambitious deadlines and missing them, but then doing it later. I, but don't we all? That's business, right? I mean, it really is. Because listen, if you're not ambitious, then you don't get anything done. And then, it, and then of course, if you're ambitious, then, then sometimes sometimes you fail. Yeah. But I, yeah, I think that I wish that um, because the other part of it is that, you know, it's just like for the U.S. as well, like I said, if they came to our door 
and they told me $3,500 per person. I have a family of four mm -hmm. and they, and they said, I need you to pay it up because we're going to send all these armaments to Israel and Ukraine and this and that. I would say, I would say absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that's like the situation because the truth is that most of Americans can't afford that. Actually, I would say 90% of Americans don't have that kind of money. They don't have that kind of money to give. And, but the fact that the, the, the global banking cabal, the central banking cabal, and the powers that be in this country are going to take it anyway uh, through inflation and other means, it's, it's criminal. And it's killing, it's killing us too. It's killing the country. So okay. I don't know. There's, it's like uh, Trump said, you know, there's a lot of bad leaders. A lot of, there's a lot of people kill pe people, kill people. You know what I mean? And Bro, this is the most political show I've had. And the, you know, I've got, <laughs> I mean, just when the YouTube algorithm decides Gordon Gordon was such a nice guy, but now look at him. Uh, okay, hold on, <laughs> like, 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 pause, pause for a second. You're, you're, go back to your media. Okay, your media. Washington elite, your yeah. groups, your followings, whatever. I mean, how, how are you? Yeah. Totally different topic. How yeah. are you, in, in, in summary, because we're kind of running out of time. How did you grow your audience? Was it organic? Did you use tools? Did you, what was, what was your thought process? Sure. So the, in to be, uh, you know, Washington Elite is one of my beloved brands. I bought that uh, domain. I, it was funny. I was like watching TV or something and they said, oh, the Washington Elite, this and that and the other. Yeah. Like, Man, that's a good one. And I went over like WashingtonElite.com and sure enough, there it was. And I, well, shoot, I bought that thing and I've had it for whatever, 15 years or however long it's been. And, right. um, that is that is one of my beloved brands. I've thrown a lot of different events with that. Uh, we've done all types of different uh, philanthropic work as well. When I mentioned taking the uh, blind vets uh, places, we've uh, you know done a lot of stuff with that. And so I, I love that brand. As we moved forward, of course, the evolution of uh, of Global Boost Media uh, really started to happen. And so what we're building now yeah. with Global Boost is a decentralized media, and Excellent. and that's really the future. And we're going to continue, of course, Washington Lee will continue, we'll continue to throw galas, we'll continue to do that stuff. But really, the Global Boost media has has really taken off. One thing I found is interesting, um, you know, Twitter was always a place that I could that I could grow an audience. Um, because you could. even though they started, yes, even though they started to clamp down and this and that and the other, it was really more free than all of the other, all the other platforms. And for a guy like me, obviously, uh, that's a good thing. So, um but yeah, I mean, the, it's it obviously uh, it has been uh, very much. Uh, I mean, uh, part of what I'm asking is, did you did you plan? You got a big following, you know. You got multiple yeah. channels. Did you plan it, or was it being very clever about opportunities that randomly showed up, or a blend, or did you do you have a master plan? It, it was, it, uh, yeah, it was definitely a blend. I mean, I we always wanted to uh, grow the network. I feel like communication is key. If you want to be uh, influential, you have to be on the mic. And, and that's why we do a daily show. We do the uh, two daily shows because if you're not on the mic, how are you going to be influential? So it's a lot, yeah. but you have to do it. And, uh, and that's, so, so that's pretty important. I think that, um, planned yes, as well as luck, right? Luck is preparation meeting opportunity. So you're prepared. Like I mentioned with the Indian guy that uh, called me five years later, I said, okay, I'm ready. And, um, and then you're ready and, and you go. We are going to the, the growth that we've had up until now, as I mentioned a little earlier, is going to be exponential over the next uh, year or so as as we grow out the, the TV stations. And I, I hope I'm wrong, but uh, probably as these banks and everything start to fail and people remember, oh, yeah, Bruce, Bruce said that on the Impact Money show way back when he's been saying this is going to happen. He's been saying I need to get out of the dollar. My dollar now, you know, I mean, if inflation continues. Tips, uh, you know, eggs already went up to like seven dollars. You know, it's going to be like fifteen dollars. So, um, so and the growing of that. You're, you're also going to have a situation where, like, it's Lebanon, where maybe you don't necessarily have inflation, but you can't take your money out of the bank. Well, absolutely, and that's what I mentioned about FDIC. They only have 0.7 percent of all the assets, guys. So your FDI insured, you think your hundred thousand dollars in the bank is insured, and it's not. It's not insured. I mean, it, it's not. So. Um, so we'll see. I mean, hopefully all that stuff, like you said, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, but, uh, it very much has been, yes, we've always been trying to grow, but organic as well. Um, that's great. You know, that being authentic, uh, coming on shows like this, 
opening up, you know, some people may not agree with uh, a lot of the things they say, but like I said, I, I pretty much like everybody, you know, unless you're just mean or you're a bad person, I pretty much uh, like people and we can get along. And that's what it's all about. When we were kids in the U.S., what it was all about, you didn't, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but uh, words will never hurt me. And uh, you didn't have to agree with everybody. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, uh, that's, that's what life's all about. And that's the, that's the spice of life as they say, right? I'll, I'll even, I'll take you one further, which is we don't even have to all like each other because you can learn things from people you don't like. It's not, if you, why didn't, you know, there's people you agree with who you like. Okay. That's one audience, right? There's people who you don't agree with, but you like. When you right. train yourself to listen to people you don't like and don't agree with, when you can control your and just be quiet and not interrupt them and not give them the you know the death stare, but just like listen calmly. Sometimes you pick up a, a little nugget of something that's you wouldn't get elsewhere. And so one one of my adult tasks, which I you know no one's perfect. One of my adult tasks is to engage with people. Uh, look, I like you and I generally agree with you. Okay, it's not you. It's not you. You're fine. <laughs> okay, but you know, I mean, seriously, I mean, look, I'm, I'm in Dubai. I don't necessarily agree with everyone. I don't agree with anyone on their foreign politics. I don't agree with their position on different groups, ethnic groups, you know, or or the, the religion or this and there. But you know, I don't need to agree. I I, right. I just shut up and listen. And every once in a while, I listen to something. And I'm like, uh, oh, darn shit. You know, that one's that. You know, in this in this world of bleh. I just got a gym I would not have thought of otherwise. And none of my friends are saying this and I need to listen to that. And it happens. Well, and you're old enough to know that you, the more you learn, the smarter you get and the more you, the more you evolve uh, on things and, and you, the more you know. your, your views evolved. Yeah. So that, that's why we need voices like yours. All right. So look, we're going to wrap this up. Anyways. What I'd love is for you to, you know, I'm sure you will give me all the links to all your different channels and media and everything. And I'll include it in the show notes. Um, awesome. You know, I appreciate you taking the time. I know you're busy. I know you got family. I know you're at an ice rink. I know you got 47 channels to run. You're, you're a good man. I'm always happy to see you, whether virtually or in person. So thank you very much. Likewise. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me on, Gordon. It's been an absolute pleasure. My and thanks. I look forward to seeing you in, in Dubai and around the world. Yes. I was, I was dumbing down to stop the recording, but you gave me a nice compliment. So I, I let that one stay on tape. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank <laughs> sure. you. Thank you.